In this video, I'm going to explain how to use Crunch. What you're seeing on screen at the moment is a simple program that produces a times table. And uh, let's see if one of the nice things you can do is actually run it step by step, instruction by instruction. So here, for instance, we can see it executing. If I click onto the next step, it's asking for a number. So if I want to do a five times table, I'll select five. And now you can see the program executing here. It's going to output the result to the screen. Do a few more things. This is the first. This is the second. Five times two is 10, and so on. We can also just run it by clicking on Run. And here you can see we've now got the full five times table, one to 12. So let's see how we actually can create a crunch project from scratch. Let's see how we create a crunch project from scratch. So here we are on the projects menu item. We're going to click new project. Leave Codio base stack. Enter a name for your project. Press enter or press create. And here we are now inside an empty project. So to create a new crunch file, all we do is we right click here on the project name, say new file. And we give it a file with extension crunch. So for instance, demo.crunch. So anything with the extension .crunch will give you a new crunch file. OK, so here we are now in source code editing mode. So there's nothing here at the moment. So let's create something. So we'll start off by just creating a, lab, uh, a, uh, a comment at the top. So get number, for example. Now let's add an instruction. Let's say we want to input something, the user should input something and store it in the accumulator. Um, so we do INP. As you can see, we've got access to the full list of instructions here. We can scroll down and all the descriptions are given. So let's do INP again. Now let's create some variables. So data locations where we can store whatever's in the accumulator or load from the accumulator. So I'm going to go dat. This is a data storage location, and we're going to give it a name. So let's call this one number. And let's have another one called current. And we can initialize those with values if we want. So we could change these to default values. Right, let's carry on adding some instructions. So for instance, here we've input our value. And if we wanted now to store this value, let's say a number or current, we add a new instruction. This will insert an instruction below the current line. Store it, and it's defaulted to number. Let's add another one. Store. This time we want to store it in the current location. So that'll store it in here. Whatever we've input will be stored now in these dat locations. Now let's say we want to create a branch point, something that uh, the, our code can jump to uh, or branch to. So we can add a label here and let's call this loop. And now we're going to take an instruction that outputs whatever is on the accumulator to the console window, which we saw earlier on, but we'll show you in a second. Now we're going to uh, load whatever's in the counter variable. Now we haven't yet got a counter variable, so fine, we instruct one, or we create one. You can also see that I've got these two instructions out of sequence. I can click on that and drag it above. Now let's create our, another data variable. We'll call this one, this is going to be a counter, so we'll call this CTR for instance. Now I want to um, load whatever's in counter in my counter I just created, so you can see it comes from the drop-down list. Uh, let's increase whatever's in the accumulator by one. This is the increment instruction. Um, we might do another store. And we're going to store whatever's in the accumulator to counter. Now here comes an interesting instruction to the comparison operator. So if I do CMP, this will compare what's in the accumulator with a given value, and we'll set flag, flag, reg, flag registers. Let's have a look at that in a moment. So if I compare it, this would be comparing it to zero, but I want to compare it to a value of 12, because I'm going to be counting from 1 to 12, because I'm going to do a 12 times table. 
Um, now, the next instruction will be a branch instruction. Um, so, I actually want to add another branch point here, so let's add another um, branch point, and we'll call this done. This is where it would jump to when it's done, when it's hit the, tw the number 12. So here, after this instruction, I'm going to say branch if equal to to done. So that will basically, if the accumulator contains the value 12, it's going to branch to done. Now, at the moment, I need a few more instructions for this to make sense. So let's add LDA current. I'm deliberately not trying to explain the algorithm here, just trying to show you really how to use crunch. Um, and maybe I want to do an addition. So I want to add whatever is in the accumulator with the number stored in the variable called number, and so on. So I haven't finished this program, but it gives you an idea of the way you can construct a program. Um, if I want to step through my code, sort of debug it, here we are now, and now I can go press the step button, and here you can see it's prompting me for a value. So if I put in 5, you can see now that it's going to, if I press store in number, if we scroll down, we can see number currently contains 0. If I step over this line, and maybe this one too, and scroll down, you can see now they both contain 5. That's because we stored whatever was input to those two data locations. Now we're going to output it, so the out instruction writes a value to the little console here. Next we're going to load whatever is in counter. Counter is currently 0. And now we're going to store, increment, increase it by 1, and store it in counter. So now the variable counter contains 1. Here's this comparison operator. So if I say compare to 12, now if you look down here at the flags, you can see that the not equals flag is set. That's because the uh, accumulator does not equal 12. It's 1. It doesn't equal 12. It is less than 12. It's also less than or equal to 12. So here we're basically saying branch if it's equal to if any of these, uh, fl if the equal flag was set, which it's not, branch to done, so it would jump to this point. Because the flag isn't set, it will just carry on, and so on. Uh, at any point, if I want, I can just press the run button, and that would just run at full speed. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an idea just how to use the crunch code editor and how to step through your code.